Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. And this is a bit of a breaking news story that the BBC are reporting that Arm has instructed its staff to stop working with Huawei so it can comply with the current US sanctions. Now, this is a very dynamic situation, it's a very fluid situation. It could even be all changed by the time I kind of publish this video. So let's think about it this way. What would happen if a company like Huawei loses its access to companies like Arm? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So what the BBC are reporting is it's got hold of some internal documents, a memo that has been sent to ARM staff saying that they cannot work with Huawei on current projects or on future projects. So that basically kind of just cuts Huawei off completely. And the idea being is this is so they can uh, comply with current US sanctions. Now this whole situation is very dynamic. As I said, it may even be out of date by the time I publish this video. But as we know, Huawei were put on a blacklist, then they were given, given a 90 day reprieve. That reprieve doesn't seem to be what we're hearing now about what ARM are doing. But when we reach out to ARM, all they're saying is that they are complying with all regulations uh, and they're not specifically mentioning uh, Huawei and they're not denying or confirming anything. They're just saying we confirm to all regulations. So this is a very, very uh, gray thing at the moment, all very up in the air, no official statements. So let's just imagine what would it mean if a company like Huawei lost access to ARM. So first of all, what do Huawei, uh, what is ARM's and Huawei's relationship? Well, uh, Huawei have their smartphones and in their smartphones they have these Kirin processors, for example, the Kirin 980. And inside that Kirin 980, there are some large components that are designed by ARM. For example, the Cortex CPU and the Mali GPU. So in terms of future projects, we would assume that Huawei will be releasing more phones. That was their plan over the, the next year. At some point, they would come up with their new flagship device. It would have a new processor in it, probably called something like the Kirin 990, if the Kirin 980 was the uh, current processor. And in it, we would expect to find some ARM designs in the CPU and the GPU. And maybe even there would be new designs that have yet to have been announced. Now, if they have lost that access to that, well, what does that mean? Are they allowed to ship that chip because they may have received the designs before today's cutoff? Or does it mean they just lose all kind of support? Does this really affect the phones that not for you know, the end of this year, 2020, but more for phones in, in 2021? It, it, it's impossible to say, but the point is that Huawei is heavily dependent for its processors on designs from ARM for both the CPU and the GPU. But this isn't only just about Android smartphones. Uh, Huawei actually has a server chip which they are uh, pushing, which allows them to build servers based on the ARM architecture, and they have their own ARM-based server chip. So exactly what I've just said for you know, the uh, Kirin chips also applies to their server chips. If they lose access to that in terms of support and the relationship they have with ARM, again, where is that cutoff date? Does it mean today? Does it mean you know last week? Does it mean you know, we don't know. And, and international law is very, very strange here because Arm is a UK based company. It's headquarters in the UK. It's got a Japanese owner, but yet it has offices all over the world, including in the UK and in France and in Norway and in the USA. And this is part of the problem. Some of the designs that come out of Arm's huge global operation come from engineers who work inside of the USA. So the Cortex A76 was probably almost completely designed in Texas. So that chip in itself, is that now something that falls under the US sanctions? What about a chip design that was designed in France or in the UK? Does that fall under the same sanctions? These are, it's all international law questions and they're very, very way beyond what I understand about how uh, international law works. But clearly there's some lawyers somewhere who think that what ARM do uh, is contravening or they have to become in compliance with the regulations that are being put forward by the US government at the moment in connection to, uh, to Huawei. And so it's not only Android smartphones, not only servers, Huawei, of course, a lot of this all started with Huawei's infrastructure. What's infrastructure? Infrastructure is the cell towers, basically, and the backbone network so that allows all of our cell uh, you know, smartphones to work. So 4G and of course now moving forward 5G, 
There's lots of technology that has to go in the cell tower, in the back, uh, in the backbone that allows all that 5G stuff to, to happen and while we want to sell 5G equipment. So their 4G and 5G equipment has got processes in it. You have to have processes for processing all of these signals, for processing all of these uh, packets of data every time you open up a web browser using you know, the cellular network. Well, there's a processor somewhere on a cell tower and on lots of other network switches and network infrastructure that's processing all those packets as they're flying back and forth. It's also billing your, you know, your, your provider, telling you how many minutes you've spent, what numbers you've called, making the connections, the whole lot. And, uh, I don't know what processors that, um, that Huawei use, but I would pretty much guess that they also use ARM processors inside that infrastructure equipment. So it's Android phones, uh, Huawei servers, and Huawei infrastructure are now all affected uh, by the fact that they've been cut off or could be cut off from ARM. Which leads us to the question, what are Huawei's alternatives? Well. Uh, if ARM has been cut off, you can pretty much assume that also Intel has been cut off because Intel is definitely an American company. There's no way that they can turn to Intel to get some of this stuff because they would be under exactly the same uh, sanctions. Now, the other opera, uh, processor that is supported by Android is, is MIPS. So MIPS has always been supported by uh, Android for, for, for many, 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 many years. And I've even run Android on a MIPS board. I've got a video about that uh, and, and it works. So MIPS is there as well, but MIPS is also owned by uh, an American company whose headquarters are in California. So they can't turn to MIPS. So that only leaves them the alternative of developing their own processor, developing something themselves. Now they have two different options here. One, they just go completely proprietary follow their own path and design a chip with its own instruction set. They make the compilers, they make the operating system, they port Linux over to it, they port Android or a variation of Android over to it, they port all of the stuff for their infrastructure over to it, they port whatever they wanna run on their servers over to it. But of course, that in itself is a multi-year job. That's not gonna happen between now and next Monday or something like that. It's a multi-year billion dollar uh, investment. It doesn't solve a problem for tomorrow or the next 90 days whenever these different sanctions are, are, are going in and out. And the other thing, of course, is it could go with an open source inf uh, instruction set. So RISC-V, for example, is open source. That would mean that the compilers are already there. That would mean that the uh, Linux has already been ported or they would then make their own implementation of a RISC-V processor. So that would alleviate some of the problems in terms of the ecosystem that have to be developed for making these uh, chips. But of course, it's still a multi-billion dollar investment to actually design those chips and get them out to be fabricated, to be actually in devices. And again, multi-years, it's not gonna happen overnight. Okay, that's it. A very quick kind of just rough put together because I want to get this out quick onto the Gary Explains channel. There's my quick look at what would happen if a company like Huawei lost access to uh, ARM's uh, designs. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that notification uh, bell icon. And uh, well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.